we should get my full panel and have you review that shit. you'll be like oh my god your shit is terrible Okay, so we're going to review one blood work this time, and next time I'll do Michael and Trevor. This time we'll do Lee. So I know there's going to be a little detailed, but it, it hopefully should be interesting. I want to mention ahead of time, I'm not a doctor. None of us are doctors. This is not medical advice. You should consult with a doctor. We're just, as uh, observers, speculating on what you might want to look out for. So this is an African-American gentleman. He says, can you please evaluate and give me some helpful feedback based on what you see? Thank you, Leo. If you can block out my name, we've done that. He's a male, he's 31 years old, he's 6'2", he's African-American, which is important, and he's 198 pounds. Which is important. It's important because we're going to see now. I've looked at this a little bit ahead of time, and so I'm going to try to zoom in a bit so you guys can see it well, and yeah. then I'm going to click... Oh, what the... F Sorry, guys, I have like... Oh, look at his creatinine. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things going. That's why I said African-American is important. So, uh, so number one, your C-reactive protein is 0.5. That's above the level that's considered optimal. So they're mentioning optimals uh, less than 1.0. Really, if you have above 0.3, you have a little bit of systemic inflammation. Not that concerning, but you do. So that's a little interesting. It could be maybe you got a, uh, the vaccine or something like that. I've seen some people with higher C-reactive proteins afterwards. Your glucose is high. What does this mean? This could mean you're a little bit insulin resistant or you were stressed that morning. You had a cortisol spike, something like that. Um, We'll look at your HbA1c, but the way you could test this out is by doing an oral glucose tolerance test. So the doctor could give you a glucose challenge and then check your glucose level and your serum insulin levels at regular intervals for a two to three hour period. By the way, guys, in the future, if you want to know which blood tests I do for people that don't have problems, you can go to my website and I added them recently to the website so you can see which biomarkers I look at. As urea and nitrogen is normal, look at that creatinine at 31, 32 years old. So this is a really high creatinine for a guy. Now, of course, you're African-American. Maybe you have the APOL1 variant, but this is really concerning. So your kidney, we don't know exactly. I don't know if you have your SD. His GFR, his GFR is, is, is like 70, though. Yeah, but that's just a calculation. I mean, yeah. we, maybe you're very muscular. Um, I forgot his name, but Lee. We don't know if you're very muscular, but this is this is high. When I was really muscular, or as muscular, sorry, as muscular as I was, it was one point. My maximum was one point two five or something like that, and I was eating a lot of protein and everything. So, there's something going on with your kidneys. There's something. So you should you should get your SDMA calculated and your C-statin C, symmetric dimethyl arginine, arginine, so you can get those two to to compare it to. Your ALT and EST are. These could be a little high because you're muscular also. These are not considered high on this scale, but most of the people in the U.S. have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Not most, but a, a large percentage of the average population. So this is actually high. So somebody that's not muscular should be around 10 to 30 or so, 15 to 30. So who knows? This could be just that you're muscular, as I said. Your albumin is good. Okay. Uh, wait, I'm trying to scroll down. Oh, it's not. there's nothing to scroll down to. So let's see his testosterone. Wow, so you're not on he's not on testosterone, huh? That's a good natural testosterone level though. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And so your estradiol is forty eight, which is a nice okay. level also. Um let's look at the other blood tests. I think there it gets a little worse. Um so your your ferritin is not so high. So this is something for people to keep in mind. If you have this lower, you may be you may live longer potentially. Um, your serum insulin level is not very indicative. It's not very useful unless you have it across a, a time frame, like the OGT test, OGTT test that I just mentioned. As hematocrit is normal, is neutrophils. So your neutrophils, useful indicator of of non-specific immune function, whereas lymphocytes are specific immune function. Your neutrophil over lymphocyte ratio can sometimes give you an indicator of whether you have. Uh, like an autoimmune condition or systemic inflammation. Now this, oh yeah, it does get worse. Okay, so this is this is why I really wanted to review this, guys. So next week we'll review another, guys. But um, let's look at this. So his total cholesterol is two fifty eight. So in America, the American Medical Association considers that if you have a total cholesterol over three hundred, you're very close to that. You would be considered to have familial hypercholesterolemia, a genetic predisposition to having extremely high lipid levels which is very, very dangerous. So you're almost at that level already. Your HDL cholesterol is, is very low. Um, you have, unless you're on steroids, you have some genetic predisposition towards this. 
and your LDL cholesterol is insanely high. That's 201. Your triglycerides are not that high, meaning that you probably don't have insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome. And now there are contrarians in the cholesterol world that'll tell you that if you have low triglycerides, I mean, this is not very low, but if you have a lower than LDL cholesterol comparatively, that you're safe. But really, if, if you go by the mainstream opinion, 201. So it's never been shown that people develop plaque in their arteries at a number lower than 70. Now you're more than double that. So normally you would be developing plaque depending on your inflammation level at a rapid rate. And most doctors would tell you to get on some cholesterol medication that has been known to extend life, like something like ezetimibe, bampedoic acid, statins, or a PCSK9 inhibitor. So these are some ratios you have here and some more, there are more specific, he goes into some, well, let me see if I can see it. They have, oh yeah, see, they go by the particle number, which is really useful, by the way. Excellent that this guy got tested. So your LDL cholesterol is a measure of your amount of cholesterol in your low-density lipoprotein particles. This is actually a count of the particles. Why do people do this? Because there was a, there's a guy called Ron, I think his last name is Strauss, but I forgot his last name. But anyway, this guy published some research showing that small, dense LDL particles produce plaque at a much higher rate than large, buoyant LDL particles. So when you have a high amount of small particles, which you can get this tested by the ion motility test at Quest Diagnostics. If you do that and you see that your LDL particle number is high, because you can have a lot of particles and they don't have a lot of cholesterol in them. So you may have a lower LDL cholesterol, but actually have a lot of particles. And a lot of those particles would be more likely to get lodged in your arterial street or inside the arterial wall. So Anyway, with just to mention uh, for the audience, sorry, Boston and and uh, and Scott, if I'm boring you guys a little bit, but I just want to mention for the audience, if you see that your LDL cholesterol is 201, you don't really need to do this test anymore, these detailed tests about the LDL particle, all this stuff, because you're so high that it doesn't even matter at this point. This is dangerous. But if you were at like 100, then that would be interesting to know how many particles you have, to know if they're small and large and so on. Um, don't worry, guys. I'll, I'll be done soon. I'm just going to do one more. Um, he has another test here, which was interesting. So he has the, this is a test of the proteins that are attached to these, some of these particles. Also interesting. This is, he did great tests. The final thing I want to comment on is he does not have a genetic predisposition toward lipoprotein little a being high. Uh, unless you're taking niacin and steroids or something like that. But usually it'll be over 40 or 50 if the person has the genetic predisposition. Boston, I don't know if you've ever heard of this before, but this is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Yeah. I would have liked to see if this guy had also homocysteine calculated. I didn't see it here, but it may have been there. Um, but anyway, this wasn't so comprehensive. I didn't want to be too boring, but hopefully it was a little useful. So well, if I, uh, we should fucking get my full panel and have you review that shit. You'll be like, oh, my God, your shit is terrible. <laughs> well, I, well, well I, I, you've never actually gotten anything that I've asked you to get tested. I would literally be, you would literally sit there for five hours mm. saying everything's trash. <laughs> That's not true. Your cholesterol is low, isn't it? I don't know. I, you, you, I don't know why, where you got that from. I, I, I never even checked my cholesterol. What? <laughs> I mean, what I, I get it. I get it on the blood work, but I don't even look because I don't really fast. I think I've seen your blood work before and the cholesterol is a bit low. But by the way, it has nothing to do with fasting. Only the triglycerides get affected by fasting. Oh, okay. How's your blood work, Scott? Do you have good cholesterol? Um, good. Yeah. No, everything comes through pretty good. Um, I mean, I haven't had it done since, uh, it's been about eight months ago, but I haven't been on anything. I've been just on TRT in the past eight months. So, oh, wow. yeah. How come? Yeah. Um, not to start, sure? um, no, I'm trying to uh, start a family. So we're, I'm actually trying to stay fertile. Oh, so it's funny we were talking about that earlier. I actually uh, worked with with Boston on that a little bit too. He's telling me that I'm I'm good to just get on a cycle, but I don't know mentally. I just feel like um, I just want to stay on TRT. I don't know. You probably are, but uh, that's great news. Uh, you are you married? Uh, in, engaged. We've been together for very like seven years. We've been engaged the past three years, so. Oh, fantastic. One of those long <laughs> engagements. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get annoyed with that with, stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's her fault. <laughs> <laughs>